Okay, so this is my first dedicated fluking trip in a couple of months, really. Um, I'm at the edge of a channel. The tide and wind are both um, against the boat right now. So I'm just holding myself stationary with the pedal drive and casting along the edge. Um, I'm, I'm sort of fan casting, like this first cast I'm casting right in front of me and then the next cast I'm angling it towards the left just to target a little bit deeper water and then I move my boat um, side to side and repeat that process. Um, this is not a normal fluking year. Uh, last year I averaged like 3.2 something keepers a trip and that's including early season where you know there were skunkings and late season after the fluke already left. Um, this trip I had two bites and they were both keepers but they were six hours apart and that is abysmal. Um, anyway, so yeah, so the second cast, um, I'm casting into maybe 30 feet of water. That first cast was like 15 to 20. And I'm just popping it. And they always take it on the fall. So the only indication I had a hit there was my line ticking. Um, you're not going to feel these bites if you jig the way I do, but but if you watch your line, um, the hits are very obvious. Anyway, here's my new net, and first try, fail. Yeah, so I'm not used to the balance of the net yet. Um, it's The length and hoop is perfect. Um, the bag is a little heavy. It's a little shallow too, so I might have to look for a different net bag. Anyway, that's a half ounce Spro 5 inch Galt mullet. It's my standard jigging setup for really almost everywhere I fluke. You know, from 5 feet to 50 feet. Under normal conditions. So that fish was about 22 inches, um, you know, it's nice, but nothing to write home about. So here is literally six hours later, it's a second tide change, and I'm in uh, much shallower water here. Um, I think this might be like 10 to 12 feet, and when you're jigging this way, you know, the slack line popping, in shallow water, your jig gets a lot of motion. Um, there's there's not that much drag acting upon your line. So when you pop it, that jig really flies up. And here, the current, um, it's, it's wind against tide now, so I'm not using my pedal drive. I'm, I'm, I'm being kind of held in place. I'm casting up current and just jigging across. And that fluke hit really high in the water column, um, almost at the top of the jig's uh, trajectory, which I found a little strange. But, you know, f fluke will come up quite a ways from the bottom. I've I've seen them follow them up to the boat you know in like 20 feet of water so And as usual, we bleed all our fish. Um, this guy, if you noticed earlier, he spat up something and it turned out to be a um, pretty decent sized blue crab. Um, 
I do use uh, crab scented Berkeley gulp juice to spray on my gulp, so who knows? I mean, a white mullet could be a crab to a fluke, right? Anyway, um, I'm not going to show the whole fillet process, but here I actually remember to take the cheeks out. Um, this, especially with this knife, which is I think that's a 9 inch uh, Dexter, that this operation is uh, pretty dangerous. So, this, if you're going to do this, please be careful. You know, the knife is angled towards your hand. There's really no other way to do it as far as I can see. Okay, so the dish we're doing today is a precise ceviche. And I say precise because um, the ratio of lime juice to salt uh, actually needs to be measured. And other than that, you know, it's just a normal ceviche. With like not very many ingredients um, fluke is actually a traditional fish um, they use for ceviche they have a species of uh, flounder I'm pretty sure it's very similar to California halibut or olive flounder but they look exactly like fluke and anyway, yeah, so, so I skipped all that, um, I filleted it, I rinsed it in a um, saltwater brine, and then I wrap it in paper towels. Um, this is how you should store all your fillets, any kind of fillet. Okay, so um, here I'm just cutting up some limes. We need a hundred mils of lime juice. And um, that method of cutting limes, that's the way you get the most juice. I'm using kosher salt and you need 10 mils or 2 teaspoons of kosher salt or 1 teaspoon, 5 mls of um, regular table salt or sea salt. Um, okay, so the red onion is going just to be sliced um, and this is how you want to slice it, not the other way. This, uh, this gives a better looking segment and not too thin um, maybe quarter of an inch maybe a little thinner than that but not paper thin and half of it we are going to soak in the lime juice and the other half will keep um, fresh so to speak and we'll incorporate that later okay so for this dish I am using one fillet from the dark side um, I think this is a shoulder piece and this will make three to four servings you know appetizer size servings uh, the fish like the onions you don't want to cut too small this is basically a large dice and um, you want to keep the size uniform so that they all quote unquote cook the same amount in the lime juice and as usual you know any kind of raw fish preparation your hands your knife your cutting board everything has to be extremely clean um, you know there's there's always a risk if you're prepping raw fish but the biggest risk is uh, cross-contamination Okay, and this is completely optional. Um, this is a piece of octopus tentacle. Um, I purchased it from a Japanese market. Um, if you happen to want to do this yourself, um, you would simmer the octopus in salted water 45 minutes, let it chill, and that's it. Uh, we're not 
trying to make it very tender. This is actually quite chewy. So a little less octopus than fluke. And yeah, we throw everything in the marinade and we're going to let it sit um, no more than 10 minutes, more like five minutes. Um, this is not one of the ceviches that you let it go overnight and here I'm adding pepper you want lots of freshly ground black pepper and that's basically it um, you know you have very fresh ingredients you bled the fish uh, there's the fresh red onions so now you have sort of a pickled onion and fresh onion contrast okay so here's the first plating um, which is how you would serve it traditionally and when you're plating food um, you want to be very close to the plate that you're dropping the food down onto um, that way you know the sauce or the juice they're not gonna splatter and you want to try to hit the center of the plate and leave mm, I would say at least 30 to 40 percent of the plate exposed that's how you get that kind of fancy plating effect so okay there's um just the plain chain you want to spoon some of that liqueur over everything so it's nice and shiny and you see the fluke you know started to cook a little bit in the lime juice but that's as far as you want to take it now here's a more dressed up plating and I'll just show the whole thing without cutting out too many segments um again you want to be close now when you're plating things into a bowl if you happen to get sauce or juice on the rim just start over uh, don't don't try to clean the rim of the bowl that that's not gonna work especially something like ceviche you know just dump it back in the main bowl and just start over again so you want to achieve a little bit of vertical height in your plating and you achieve that by you know very gently placing your items down using your hand to keep it from falling over um, and here we're just going to dress it up with some of the liqueur and in this super fancy bowl plating we are going to finish with a little um, daikon radish sprouts to mix the purple and green and these these have kind of like a peppery taste to them and it actually goes very well with the fish and I'm also going to finish with just a little drizzle of extra virgin olive oil and again you wouldn't do this um, if you care about authenticity but I think it's perfectly fine I think if they had olive oil they would use it so okay this is uh you know sort of the fancier plating and here's the two side by side alright well thanks for watching and please subscribe if you like what you see